okay looking at number 11 I know that we can't draw a circle but this says that we have a tangent that's positive tangents are only positive in quadrants 1 and quadrants 4 and then it tells us the signs like the y's have to be less than 0 that means that signs have to be negative or the y's have to be negative. So the only place out of these two where y's are negative would be quadrant four. So I know in quadrant four, I'm gonna go ahead and write this right now. I have the tangent and I have the reciprocal sine and the reciprocal and I have cosine and the reciprocal. And I know in quadrant four that the sines and cosines and the reciprocals will be negative tangent and it's Reciprocal cotangent will be positive. Okay, so I'm going to get started. Um, I have 1 plus tangent squared x equals secant squared x. And so Mary helped me get started on this. As a reminder, I noted that I did the try these earlier, um, but that's been last week and I honestly just forgot. So I had to look for the trig identity that contained a tangent, and then I'm going to put in what tangent equals. So tangent is 2 thirds, and then I need 2. I need to go ahead and to square this quantity. So this means 2 squared is 4, so 4 and 3 squared is 9. And I need to add it to 1. Well, 1 is the same as 9 over 9. I take whatever the denominator is. So I have 13 over 9 is equal to secant squared x. Now to get secant by itself, I'm going to square both sides. So the square root of 13, it's irrational. Square root of 9 is 3. So I find secant and it's going to be negative radical 13 over 3. Now the, co the cosine is just the secant, and we're taking the reciprocal of it. So if I take the reciprocal of this, I ended up with 3 over radical 13. But remember, you can't end up with a final answer with a radical on the bottom. So what is the fast way? It's to push the denominator up. So 3 radical 13 over 13. 3 radical 13 over 13. Also remember, it tells us that the tangent is 2 over 3, we flip that 3 over 2. So we only have the sign to do last. All right, and so I chose um, looking up above, and I'm like, which one contains a sign? And the only identity that contains a sign is sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Now I want to get the I want to get the sign by itself. So right away I'm going to move the cosine to the opposite side, and when it moves over, it's going to be subtracted. Um, now, what do I know? I know that the cosine up here, if I move this out, the cosine is this ugly number. So it is negative 3 radical 13 over 3, and then I have to square it. How do I know this? Because I figured out the secant, the reciprocal of secant is cosine. I figured out the signs based on looking at the criteria, which is tangent is positive, and it said that the sine is negative or the y's are negative. That's how I know that these four are negative because sine, cosine, and its reciprocals are negative in quadrant four and tangent is positive. Okay, so here's the cosine. This means the square root. We're going to take it times itself. So I have 1 minus negative 3 radical 13 over 3 times negative 3 radical 13 over 3. Okay, awesome. Here we go. 1 minus. Okay, negative 3 times negative 3 is going to be a positive 9. Square root of 13 times the square root of 13 is 13. And I meant to put on the bottom here, notice if I go up above, um, this should have been, hold on one second. When I rewrote this, it was 3 radical 13 over 13. I forgot a 13 right here. So I come down here, these are supposed to be 13s. Okay, all over thir 13 times 13 is 169. Now I went ahead and I used a calculator to reduce this for me. And I ended up with, 1 times 9 is 9 over 13. Okay, let's make this 9 into a fraction, which is the same as 13 over 13, which is 1. 13 minus 9 is 4 over 13. Now to get x, sorry, to get sine by itself, I need to square root both sides, the top and the bottom. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 13 is irrational. So how can I rewrite this in a different form, but keeping the same value? Push the square root of 13 at the top, and the 13 remains at the bottom. All right, this is what the sine is equal to. 2 radical 13 over 13. 2 radical 13 over 13. There's the negative sign. Now, here's the original. This is the original sign, and then I had to make it proper. So when I find the reciprocal of 
sign and you can take this original one before I rewrote it and take the reciprocal which is radical 15 over 2. Radical 15 over 2. Okay, so as I go through number 12, Mary's already done this problem and she's just going to stop me if she sees me make a mistake. Okay, so I know that this is cosecant and cosecant is reciprocal of um, of sine. So I have a sine is going to be a negative value. So where are sines negative? Sines are negative in the bottom quartiles, which is quartiles 3 and 4. That's where the sines are negative. Again, the reciprocal and one of the major three trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, the reciprocal of the three major trig functions will always have the same sign. So if the reciprocal of sine is negative, that means sine is negative. Okay, that places us in 3 and 4. Now it says that this angle has to be between, this is the equivalent to like where 90 degrees is and 270. So it has to be in one of these two. And again, the only one to receive double shading is quadrant number 3. So I'm going to write tangent and cotangent. Cosine, I don't care the order you write these in. And secant and sine and cosine. Er, cosecant. So in quadrant number three, the first two are positive, everything else is negative. Okay, so which trig of identity has the cosecant? It would be, I gotta find it, it is one plus cotangent squared. I'm gonna put an x equals cosecant squared. Okay, so this is what I have. I chose that one, it's because that contains the identity that has this in it. Okay, so I'm going to replace this with negative 4. So I'm going to find it. Here it is. I'm going to replace it with negative 4 and then square it. Now I'm going to take this 1 and when I bring it across, it's going to be subtracted. So cotangent squared is equal to this quantity. Cotangent squared is equal to 16 minus 1, which is 15. Cotangent squared x, <clears throat> the square root of it, and the cotangent is equal to the square root of 15. It describes a length, so I know it's going to be positive. I know that can't be broken down any further. So I know this is positive 15. Now the reciprocal is 1 over the square root of 15. The reciprocal is 1 over that. Well, you can't leave it on the bottom. Times this, and I end up with 1 radical 15 over 15. So radical 15 over 15. Where do I go from so let's see here. I now know tangent and cotangent. Well, so I was given, sorry, I was given the cosecant as negative 4. This reciprocal is 1 over 4. It keeps the same signs. Okay, so I know a sign. Let's go with that. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. I know that the sine is negative 1 fourth. So this is negative 1 fourth, and then we're going to square it, plus cosine squared x equals 1. So I'm going to rewrite this right away as cosine squared x equals 1. Now this, when I bring it over, I need to subtract it. It was positive if I bring it over, and this says take this quantity times itself twice. That's what the square means. Forget about this portion right now. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, and 4 times 4 is 16. Let's write 1 as a fraction of 16 over 16. This is equivalent to 1. 16 minus 1 is 15 over 16. All right, lastly, taking the square root, the cosine of x, now we take the square root of 15. Okay, awesome. We take the square root of 16 and we get 4. So this is the cosine, so let's find cosine. Negative radical 15 over 4. Why is it negative? Because we determine that based on which quadrant we know it's in. Okay, great. And now I need to flip this around to find the secant. So 4 over radical 15 is going to be the secant. That's not proper. So I push this up to be 4 radical 15 over 15. 4 radical 15 over 15.